Fam, it's Sandal from Substance Overstyle, and welcome to a new video. Okay, so this week I actually wanted to um, deal with a different topic of conversation. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust the light. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to do a video on um, male body image because that was requested from one of you guys who follow me on Instagram. Um, but that's now going to have to wait till next week because I feel like with everything going on, you know, in America would, and obviously anything that happens in America affects the rest of the world um, for various reasons to do with its size and the language and, you know, the number of media outlets and the fact that the six companies that control all the media outlets in America basically um, control the deep state and the entire world. Um, it would kind of have been a bit tone deaf for me to not talk about it. And then also because I've done so many videos talking about racism and white supremacy on my channel in the past, I thought it would be a good time to revisit this subject. Um, especially because, you know, I'm just getting so many people on so many sides who follow me um, and other influencers that I know who are kind of wanting to get uh, like a a proper perspective on what's really going on and I think we need more black and brown voices talking about this in a rational way um, that's not um, you know that's not coming from a really emotionally wounded place um, okay so the first thing I want to say is we are being controlled and manipulated on many different sides um, and that's nothing new. Like, race has been used as a tactic to divide people since forever. Um, for those of you that are wanting to decolonize your minds, one book that, that is excellent that you can read on this subject is Howard Zinn's um, A People's History of the United States, where he talks about how, um, you know, during the transatlantic slave trade, um, the slave owners basically started using race, which before that they didn't really, it didn't exist as a system. They started using that to divide slaves into hierarchies because what they found were the slaves that, were, that they had, were bringing from Africa and the slaves that they were bringing from Ireland um, did not see any difference between each other. You know, they were working alongside each other, they were having relationships, they were friends, and what would and they were treated really badly a lot of the time. So when they were when they would be treated badly, they would form alliances and they would overthrow and sometimes kill their their masters. So what they did was they created a system of privileges you know, what we refer to as white privilege, where they gave the Irish slaves um, certain, you know, pr property and resources after they had worked for a certain number of years. Um, so they were basically following an indentured servitude model with the whites, um, with the Irish, sorry, um, and created this system where they said, look, you know, you're like us. Before that, they didn't see Irish as like them, you know, the English did not see the Irish as the same as them. Um, you know, the Irish were colonised and oppressed, um, but they kind of assimilated them and said, you know, you're just like us, look, you look just like us, and we'll give you these certain rights and privileges, and then you can assimilate into our society after you've worked a certain number of years. Who's going to say no to that? So that's where the whole history of white privilege comes from. Now, let me make it very clear. It's not a privilege to be a house slave. And this system that we live in, we basically live in a feudalistic hierarchy of slavery. We have, like, if you look at the American dollar bill, it has a pyramid on it, and it, there's an I at the top of the pyramid. Now, that I in occult symbology basically is the eye of the creator. Um, some people see it as an ominous thing, the watcher, you know, it's, it's basically like the divine masculine. It's the God looking down at his creation. And everything comes out from that, you know? Everything is a creation of everything. So it just fractalizes outwards in the shape of a pyramid. 
Now, the great work, there's basically in Latin around it, it will say he, he approves of our work. That, that's basically what it, what it translates to. Now, the great work is not to build the pyramid, um, which is, you know, the system that we live under where we have government and then, you know, control systems and police, order followers, military, and then, you know, people at the bottom who tend to be the most melanated people. I've travelled the world and I've seen wherever I've gone, the, it doesn't matter, like, the actual ethnicity or nationality of the people, the people who tend to be doing the most hard labour jobs, the most menial jobs, the most underpaid jobs tend to be the most melanated people. Um, so the great work on this planet, alchemy, is to take down the pyramid one by one. Now you cannot destroy a pyramid from the bottom. So, you know, demonizing people for being higher up, um, you know, in the pyramid is not helpful. It's, it's basically a tactic, it's the same tactic, the divide and conquer tactic that the controllers of humanity have created to keep us fighting amongst themselves and to stop us from actually achieving a state of equity and unity consciousness. Um, so we actually have to work together and that goes both ways. So it's not just for the people lower down the pyramid, it's also for the people higher up the pyramid to stop stomping on the people at the bottom. So how we decolonize our minds depends on where you sit on the spectrum and it's an electromagnetic spectrum based on the melanin that you have in your body now if you have more of the carbon type melanin uh, which is more feminine in nature it's it's the the darker type melanin then your work is actually going to be to alchemize yourself by you know, empowering yourself, learning how to empower yourself, learning how to move up the pyramid so that you can then help others, so that we can destroy the pyramid from within it. Um, if you occupy the more electric end of the electromagnetic spectrum, the more uh, yang type of melanin, which is the sulfuric type, i.e. you're a white person or a light skin person, Decolonization involves, well, for both people, you know, it involves researching our history and researching how these systems have been used to oppress people and divide people. Um, but I think for, um, for people who have historically been more oppressed by these systems, you already know, like you already know. And so keeping you stuck in this state of victim consciousness is a way that this um, matrix hologram har harvests your energy because it keeps you in a state of you know um, of fear and survival and seeing that there's all these obstacles that are you know up against you and that keeps you in your place whereas when you actually work on yourself and adopt a more level up mindset um, you know, and let a lot of that, you know, anger and ancestral trauma, which a lot of us carry, you know, like that's a real thing that isn't talked about enough in these spaces, you know, slavery, colonization, partition. For me personally, my family has a lot of, carries a lot of ancestral trauma from the partition of India and Pakistan. Um, that needs to be healed in order to move forward. But keeping yourself locked into like researching the history and you know it's very exhausting like I did it I spent like a whole year and because I'm I occupy a position somewhere in the middle of the spectrum like you know I'm a person of color but I'm quite light-skinned so you know even though I've experienced discrimination um, and racism particularly in the workplace um, I also benefit from light skin privilege um, and I haven't experienced it anywhere near as bad as other people so I had to decondition myself from my own racism not just external racism and discrimination towards other people and the ways I'd been controlled and manipulated um, by a racist system that privileges white people. I mean, you only have to look at like your TV shows or pick up any magazine, you know, to see who is being featured and who is being held up as, you know, beautiful, acceptable, successful, all of these things. Um, so I had to kind of decondition myself and look at the ways that I had been both marginalized but also had participated in the marginalization of others and it's really really exhausting work but it is necessary for a lot of people particularly white people and I will post um, 
links in the description box below of books that you can read and also creators that you can follow who are talking about these things so that you can learn and I encourage people to definitely spend more time learning and listening than talking about it until you feel like you've got a good handle on it because I've seen a lot of you know a lot of very like performative allyship which is really not helpful like you know the other day somebody I know who I'm not going to mention posted did a post uh, you know declaring herself to be an ally talking about her white privilege talking about how a lot of her hard work and her success has come from the fact that she wasn't discriminated against and blah 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 and then somebody commented on it going oh no you've worked really hard and you should acknowledge that and then a black woman said look you're missing the point and the original poster scolded the black woman like she was a child so that was really triggering for me to watch I didn't comment on it because I don't think that like it should be the responsibility of people of colour to be constantly schooling white people because that then perpetuates more division. Like, that should be the responsibility of white allies, in my personal opinion. Um, so, sorry, I know I'm going really fast. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, so um, make sure that you do the work and you research microaggressions and you know things like unconscious bias before you start really really like posting about it and teaching other people um, you know by all means you can kind of say look I'm against racism and I'm going to do the work to be anti-racist um, but also say that you're still learning and don't you know like defer to people of color when you know you're in these spaces because you can end up like being unconsciously racist to people without realizing it um, because we have like so many biases and I had to unpack so many biases that I had um, towards black people towards you know all different groups of people even towards you know my own people who are like South Asians um, and you know this divide and conquer stuff does not work unless they actually play on both sides so I'm not saying that racism isn't a real thing it totally is like every single war that we've seen over the last few years is proof of that you know we've had the coalition who are you know the American military the British military French Australian bombing so many sovereign nations who all happen to be populated by brown and black people that's white supremacy in action it's not just you know the individual uh, discrimination or the systemic disc discrimination that happens in white majority countries or even in other countries I mean we have light skin privilege in you know they see countries as well in India Pakistan Bangladesh it's across African countries as well light skin privilege and you know a lot of these fair and lovely creams which I always refuse to um, advertise like every time I've been put up for a job for that I either like leave the casting or I send like a really shitty tape that I know is not going to be accepted because I just don't want to support that shit I think it's really racist um, so uh, let me just take a minute okay so decolonization depends on where you sit on the spectrum. I mean, it can be helpful for people of color to also research their own particular history of colonization and oppression and stuff like that. Because, you know, when people are saying stupid shit to you, stupid racist shit, you, can, you actually have a comeback and you can actually say why certain things are the way that they are. But you also have to take, you know, some self-responsibility. Yeah, like, you know, white communities can be racist, not just white, it's not just white people who are racist. Um, you know, I've seen racism all over the world, and as a model, like, you know, there's certain countries in Asia which I just can't travel to um, and get work in because I'm not white, and white models can pretty much travel to any country in the world and get work. So that's another example of white supremacy in action, but as a global problem, not just like a a white country problem even though the whole idea of whiteness is just it's a false binary okay so again actions that people can take to be actively anti-racist I find like writing down questions helps me to like channel my thoughts more easily yeah so I'm gonna post links to um, creators and books that you can read that I have personally read um, that have helped me there are others as well that you can look at but because I haven't personally read them I'm not gonna recommend them um, 
but also if you're watching my channel then you're probably interested in like spirituality and the occult and like deeper topics um, follow black and brown creators who are talking on these subjects because they will have a whole other perspective that goes outside of the duality of the you know the left versus right liberal versus republican you know they've transcended that and these are really really valuable people to follow when you do follow them you get they're going to be dropping a fucking shit ton of knowledge and most of a lot of my knowledge has come from creators like this i'm going to post links to them in the description box below be respectful like don't like if you are following them and getting knowledge from them you know join their memberships you know send d donate money to them on their super chats plug them wherever you can don't keep them to yourselves because a lot of the wisdom that they share is so heavily occulted that a lot of people don't want to share them because they a they're really valuable sources and b what they say it can be very controversial um so and I've, i see it all the time i see a lot of like you know white european you know ladies and men you know in the natural healing space or the spiritual spirituality space charging a lot of money for their services and a lot of the knowledge that they've acquired has come from black and brown cultures and they don't give credit a lot of the time and they charge an arm and a leg for their services it's not accessible to the original people that created it so at least share your sources at least say you know where your teachings come from so that people if they can't afford your services can at least go and do the study themselves and put the time and the energy in into empowering themselves that's how to be um, a good ally as well that's another way that you can do it um, how can POC empower themselves? Yeah, so my, back to my earlier point where I was saying, you know, it's helpful to study, you know, the history of your own people so that you can have, like, good comebacks to ignorant people. That's, that's good and that's important. Um, but at the same time, understand that sometimes engaging in these keyboard wars with people is just another way that this matrix harvests your energy. A lot of these people are what I like to call NPCs, non-player characters, which means that they're so plugged into the matrix and they're usually hosting inorganic entities, um, archons, you know, whatever you want to call them. They're not, they're not here to learn and their consciousness is not... They, they, they can, you can only meet them where they're at and you know a lot of the time all they're trying to do is upset you so that they can feed on your energy and then I'm not saying that they're necessarily conscious of this but the entities that they're hosting that basically hold together this matrix that we you know exist in need energy to feed off of um, so if they're like upsetting you and triggering you, learn to cut it off. And for me, it took a really, really long time to do this because I thought I was being an activist by engaging in keyboard wars. But literally so much of my energy and my life force was harvested by these, by these NPCs, by these soulless background people. Um, so yeah, just learn not to waste your time. If you are getting people saying stupid, ignorant shit, um, maybe create some content, you know, you can create some content, put it, you know, you can just create an answer, put it on your Instagram, on your stories or a post or even just a tweet and then, you know, that can be content that people can then use to share and that can help to change the consciousness and it can have a bigger reach. Uh, it's about you managing your energy, like everything in this universe is energy and we need to learn how to control our energy if we want to become sovereign beings we have to learn how to keep our energy embodied in our own body that's embodying the sacred feminine okay uh now what are these protests showing us on a deeper level okay so i'm going to get into this let me take a sip of my coffee <sighs> i need to slow down okay so everything that happens on the physical plane is a manifestation of um, something happening oh, sorry, in the tropics. Um, okay, so everything that happens at a physical level is a manifestation of um, what's happening on the mental plane, okay? That's the law of correspondence, as above, so below, as within, so without. It's also a mirror of what's going on within you. 
yes, you. Mind blown, right? Okay? Because you are the universe, okay? We live in a flat, fractal, holographic universe where every particle contains an image of the entire whole. So this conflict that we're seeing right now, right versus left, black versus white, um, coronavirus people versus freedom people, um, you know, matrix people versus, you know, whatever, people are trying to unplug, whatever duality you can think of um, is basically reflecting a conflict within the human psyche. So on, on the mental plane, which is basically the deepest levels of the subconscious, you're basically tapping into the God source. Um, I hope that this is making sense. It's very difficult to explain these concepts in words because words are very limited. They're only they're about as limited as human consciousness, which hasn't really expanded to include some of these more esoteric um, principles. But at the deepest levels of subconscious, you're basically tapping into the source, um, and at the de the, those deepest levels, there exists this duality, that this split, you know, masculine versus feminine, good versus evil, uh, positive versus negative, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum, yin, yang, you know, all of those things. Um, so to, we're now seeing, as we're moving into the age of Aquarius, we've reached, we're reaching ultimate separation and as we reach this ultimate separation, then things are going to, because the universe is always expanding and contracting. And then because it's, you know, holographic in nature, when you move into smaller cycles of time, so let's say, you know, each cycle of you, um, contracting and expanding lasts however many years, like let's say a million years, within the smaller units of time, you're also gonna see this expansion and contraction. You know, we see it with the phases of the moon, with the waxing and the waning. Um, so right now we're going through a cycle where we're reaching, you know, a certain amount of separation. So we have to be able to transcend that duality through the law of neutrality, which is by elevating our consciousness to that zero point where we are all one, basically. So if you can see that how they're playing this out on both sides, then you can kind of avoid getting sucked into the emotions of it which and it's not easy like don't get me wrong like I've had moments where you know I've been scrolling social media and I've seen this or that and I've got triggered and I've got upset because I've experienced racism but I also know what it's like to be racist myself um, because and yeah I agree with Monroe Bergdorf the the transgender um, model who got fired from L'Oreal like L'Oreal just Fucking, uh, like they're pissing me off so much with their show of solidarity when they fired her for calling out white supremacy and like some people would disagree like you know she was saying that all white people are racist I believe that all white people are racist I believe that all people are racist um, maybe even like the people who are you know the darker skin might also have a racist bone in their body that is kind of self flagellating like I know that I've you know had, had my own problems with internalized racism against myself and self-hatred um, so you know if you live in a society that kind of holds up one you know race above all others and under white supremacy it's impossible to not be racist um, so I don't think it was wrong what she said uh, where am I going with this what was I saying about this so yeah, I was saying it is difficult because we exist in human bodies to not get triggered and to not get sucked in and to not get upset, you know, by certain things, maybe on both sides. But I think it's important, especially if you find yourself able to, to just look at what, what people are saying on both sides, okay? I'm not saying that you need to empathize with racists or anything like that, but just look at what, what people are saying because this pendulum is always gonna swing on both sides and there's gonna there is gonna be nonsense on both sides and there is gonna be distortions of the truth on both sides and the truth often does lie somewhere in the middle um, so you know that's part of our journey to find where that middle point is um, so yeah like 
I'm, th I'm just going to leave it there now because I think I've said everything that I want to say on this for now. Um, I'm happy to talk about it again more later. I'm also open to being wrong on certain things. I hope I haven't offended anybody. Um, yeah, share your thoughts in the comment box below. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree, um, if you have other suggestions for resources that people can look at because ultimately it's all about like coming together as one people. Um, and yeah, like down with the fucking control systems like this sh like the days are numbered like this shit is not it's not gonna last long because i think a lot of people are seeing through the bullshit now so yeah okay peace out fam i will see you in the next video one love you're introduced to lsd and unless you you've taken some other drug like for instance like um marijuana or something um well you know it's an altogether new thing